Good morning, people, and today we're going to be changing the clutch on Little Moo. There she is, Little Moo. She looks really sad up there. Not too bad underneath. But, da, 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 oil. Morning, people. So, in the interest of quickness, and because you don't need to see a kit car being stripped down to see us changing the clutch on this, um, what is effectively a Triumph Herald, we've stripped her all down. So, next steps are... Obviously, we've got to lift the gearbox and take all of that off. We've already removed the slave cylinder to give more access. So pulling that back means that we should be able to bring the gearbox back just a couple of inches to get a little bit more access. Now, I've never changed the clunge on a um, Triumph Herald before, so this could be interesting. But in So in trying to access the clunge on this little beauty, we have had a few problems, not least that once the car's made into a kit car, um, yes, it's still a Triumph Herald chassis, but there's a, a kind of like a bulkhead here. So access has been really, really difficult to the point where we stripped off all the wings. Um, I've just taken the radiator out. Um, the carb is off and the manifold's coming off the top of the engine now, uh, which was a bit of a shit to get to, if I'm honest with you. But it has been a really, really good opportunity to clean things up so when it goes back on it'll be a lot better than it was so that's where we are so far the only reason i haven't videoed doing all of that is a there literally was not enough space on my phone battery and b because my language was absolutely disgusting but i do have my first only hands account picture which is the ripped glove unfortunately it has become apparent that we are going to have to pull the engine forward a little bit and hope for the best she might have to come all the way out and to be honest with you we've removed a lot of the ancillaries now anyway so it wouldn't be too much of an issue but i'm going to give it a, a little go with ernie the engine hoist and see how far forward we can drag it and see if we can get access to the plunge so we've had to take the engine out which is not a bad thing as i've said before but here she is standard kind of triumph peril engine 1.3 nothing special apart from the extra oil which is the freebie and if i turn you around to the car So as it transpires, we're so used to working on the Z3s and newer BMWs that I always panic about taking the engine out because there are so many ECUs and all the other crap and on-trails that come out with it. However, it was a piece of piss. So our little 1.3 Herald engine is out and um, we had a really, really easy job doing it actually. And Ancillary's off, the access was easy, um, eight or nine bolts around the gearbox, carb off the side few pipes um, we had to take quite a lot of the body of the vehicle off to do it because it being a, a kit car effectively it doesn't although it has the original monocoque chassis it doesn't have the original body and there's a bulkhead that's been put for the JC Midge which sits between person and engine but is very very different to what would have originally been on the Triumph Herald but it wasn't too much of a challenge uh, only reason I didn't video taking the engine out is because there was some very very bad language on my part so that's where we are now and now we're going to get on and try to change the clunge so here we have our basic clunge kit for the engine which consists of the clunge release bearing the clunge itself and the pressure plate it's all pretty much Meccano you can see where those two bits go um, and the release bearing goes inside the gearbox we're going to start with a half inch imperial to take off the bolts for the main so clutch. The pressure plate off this is what it looks like and you need to be making sure that you're putting the new clunge in the right way round so basically male outwards effectively you might need to use a flat headed screwdriver once you've undone all of the bolts just to prise this little fellow so, off new clunge compared to old clunge very very worn but it was still sort of changing gear and the new one obviously has got a lot more ridges on it um so this is what we're looking like with the clunge removed now this might look really really bad to you especially if you're used to working on newer cars but actually it's not awful there is some damage but we obviously haven't had too much heat because we're not getting kind of pretty shiny bluey colors on the metal which would indicate that it had been heated up to chuff buggery and was really really struggling so i think we're just about in time to have changed this plate although it's very very worn it hasn't caused any further damage so we're going to go ahead now and fit now we're cleaned up enough ready to fit the clunge um you'll need a clutch alignment tool ideally this is a real cheap one i found in the bottom of the cupboard and i'll be honest with you it's bloody awful so we cut that one this one's a bit better we like this one so the basic idea is Line the clunge up, pop the alignment tool in, pressure plate goes on top, use it to hold the two items together as you 
tighten up the bolts. And it really is as simple as that. You are just refitting item one, item two, and then we, when we get to the other side, we'll be doing the clutch release bearing as well. So don't forget, decent clutch alignment tool is worth its weight in gold. If you're only ever doing one clutch, just don't buy one, borrow one, because they can be really expensive. I think this one was about hundred pounds, so it's not too bad, but it does come with all the different heads for it, so it's quite useful. Right, so she's sitting there now. We align the pins and just pop them on. You might need a little hammer. Go from the bottom first, because the pins can be tricky. Once that's on, we need to bolt her up. So I'm ready now to put all of the bolts back in. I've put them in roughly by hand. Um, don't use the gun at this point. You need to be holding the support tool nice and straight. Because as you do these up, this pressure plate is what holds the clutch in. So really, really important you keep this nice and straight. Take your time, don't panic. And keep one by one, tighter, 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 until they're all nice and tight. So carry it out. And if you look at the top of the gearbox on the left-hand side, you see this hole here. We literally used a punch and a hammer and it was surprisingly easy to get out. So now the carrier's out, it's going to be a um, unbuild and rebuild disassemble as Johnny Five So say. here we have the old clutch release bearing and mount. Um, normally we'd use a puller but it didn't seem to have too much resistance. So we literally, piece of flat bar each side, socket in the middle, tap, 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 and she just popped off. So that was quite handy. And there's the new one, which is basically a race of bearings in two pieces of metal. It's nice and simple. The old one doesn't look too bad, but I'm pretty sure it will be much happier to be replaced as part of the kit. Assembly's popped back on, which is really, really simple. And then we have the pin to go back in on the left-hand side of the gearbox. And we are going to just use a punch oh. and just gently, gently drop it in. Punch and hammer. Just gently, gently. Don't force it. Shouldn't be too difficult. Once that's back in, then that should sit nicely. Halfway there. So if you just pull the assembly forward a little bit, we're going to lubricate behind here to make sure the shaft is very well lubricated before we attempt to reassemble. The so car. everything's lined back into place, which was a bit of a bugger if I'm honest with you. It's a lot of shaking and jerking to get the shaft in correctly. Really, really important that the shaft fits correctly, otherwise the clunge won't work. So now we're going round putting all the bolts back on and we're just going to drop the engine hoist down and test and see if we've done it right and if we have then the manifold etc can be screwed back on all the ancillaries were paper and you put any rubber pipes that I'm not happy with and all the usual stuff so here she is all back together and it's been a hell of a day I'm lovely and clean as always um so it actually went very very well I didn't do very detailed videos because the whole point of it was just to give people an idea and also it it took a whole day in all fairness Older vehicles can be a massive pain in the butt, but this little, we love this little fella, so it's worth it. So as it was, clunge went on nicely, and when it came to realigning the engine with the gearbox, the shaft went in beautifully. Uh, we only had to do a little bit of rocking, and I am keeping a straight face, um, but all in all, it's gone really well. So I'm going home now, as I'm cut and bleeding, filthy and tired, but tomorrow we're going to be checking spark, etc. Now this car has sat on my drive for six months to a year. Well, actually since the last motor show, hasn't really been driven, got soaking wet and been terribly disabused. So tomorrow, wires off, sparks out, clean everything up, check the distributor, check absolutely everything. And then also we're going to be having a look at the carb and see what condition that's in. So until then, thank you for looking.